Hello everybody and thank you for joining us for another story time today. Halloween is coming up very soon and we are starting to see lots of Halloween decorations out and about. In our Halloween decorations we often see animals that historically humans have thought of as kind of spooky and scary. Some of them just kind of have a bad reputation. Like what kind of animals might we see in Halloween decorations? Maybe you even have some in your house right now. Maybe black cats, spooky crows or ravens, spiders. Gwen doesn't have any spiders in her house. Maybe even bats. So bats are going to be the theme of our story today. We read a book earlier this summer all about big brown bats and how the bats that we have in Minnesota and Wisconsin are really, really helpful animals that do a lot of good things for us. If you would like to learn more about that, you can check out that story time. And I'll also post with this video, I'll post a link to some resources that will have that story time and some other things that you could do if you want to learn more about bats or help bats. Um, but our story time today is going to be about something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about the things that bats use to help them find their way at night or help them find prey, things they're going to eat at night. Does anybody know what bats use? Some bats do use their eyesight, but not the bats that we have in Minnesota or Wisconsin. What do our bats use? Echolocation, it's called. So what happens in echolocation is the bats can make a really high-pitched sound from their mouths. And those sounds go out into the night. They're in the form of sound waves, and sound waves can bounce off something and go back in the direction that they came. So those bats are letting out sound waves. They hit an object and go back to the bat. The bat has super duper duper good hearing and can hear all those sound waves coming back and is able to kind of map out what's in front of it based on the sounds that come back to it. Pretty cool. In fact, humans thought that that was so cool that we developed a technology called sonar that does the same thing. So if you've ever seen a super big ship out on the ocean, it's sending sound waves down into the water that's mapping what's going on under it because we can't see down there. So we had to do something else. Our bats here have super small eyes and they don't have very good vision, so they had to do something else. So we got our sonar idea from bats, which is really, really cool. Our story today is all about that echolocation. Um, our book is called Night Song. And it was written by Ari Burke and illustrated by Lauren Long. And I'll try really hard. This whole book takes place at night. It's very dark. And our pages kind of show some reflection. So I'll try to make sure you get a good look at everything. Because the photos are pretty great. Or illustrations, I should say. So here we go. The sun had set. And the shadows clinging to the walls of the cave began to wake and whisper. Shiro? Little Wing, the Bat Mother said to her child, tonight you must fly out into the world and I will wait here for you. So Churro's got to go all by himself. But the night is dark, Mama. Darker than the moth's eyes. Darker even than the water before dawn, the little bat exclaimed, twitching his ears this way and that. I know, whispered his mother. And when it is that dark outside, I cannot always see, Chiro admitted, stretching his wings. There are other ways to see, she told him, other ways to help you make your way in the world. How? Use your good sense. What is a sense? The little bat asked. So here's Chiro hanging upside down, because that's what bats do, right? His mother folded him in her wings and whispered into his waiting ears. Sense is the song you sing out into the world and the song the world sings back to you. Sing and the world will answer. That is how you will see. Now fly from our cave to the pond where we bats like best to eat. Have your breakfast, then fly home, but do not go further than the pond. Not unless your song is sure. So she's letting him go. 
Chiro fell into the cold air for an instant, then flapped and turned and flew out past the mouth of the cave and into the waiting night. At first, Chiro tried to peer his way through the dark. Long arms rose up in front of him, waving slowly, blocking his path. He could not see around them or over them. Chiro was frightened. They do look a little spooky. What do you think those are? But he remembered his mother's bright words. Use your good sense. Chiro began to sing, softly at first. What happens as he starts to sing? But then, more surely, his song flew ahead of him, and soon he could hear something singing back. Tall trees called out to him, chanted the lengths of their long branches and the girths of their rough trunks, Gleefully, he flew through the woods, past pines, over maples, and away. So as Chiro is singing, he's able to sense or see what's in front of him. Flying higher now, Chiro saw something sliding through the sky toward him. So out went his song, and where danger once threatened, now, Chiro saw only a flock of friends flying above him on their evening errands. Who are his friends? Geese! As he flew further, Chiro heard strange sounds, lines of noise, a thousand voices buzzing from one end of the sky to the other. For just a moment, Chiro didn't know what to do or which way to go but he followed his own song. In the sky behind him flowed a river of whispers fading away. The pond was just ahead. What are those lines of noise and voices? What are those? Power lines. When Chiro came to the pond, singing still, he was very hungry. All the night creatures were there above the reeds, thousands of tiny, flying, tasty things, each one humming a different tune. For Chiro, each one of their songs sounded like breakfast. So he's singing his song, and he can see all these bugs that he wants to eat up. That's one of the really great things about bats, is they eat mosquitoes and other pests that sometimes might damage our crops or cause other problems. Chiro ate well that night. You can see his full belly. When he was full, he stretched his wings again and thought about flying home. But he began to wonder, just a little, what lay beyond the pond? What lay beyond his mother's words? So Chiro flew a bit farther and the familiar fell away from him out, out to the margins of the world. Then he was truly on his own. What do you think Chiro's feeling? How does he look? Do you think maybe he's a little surprised about what's out there? Maybe he's a little scared to go past where he's ever been before? A little nervous? Maybe he's a little excited? Maybe a little bit of all those things? He flew fast toward a high dune, each grain of sand calling out in chorus as he passed. Chiro flapped up and over the top of the dune and out over the strand, singing louder than he had ever sang before. Out went his song over dark water then, again and again, each wave on the ocean rising up to greet him, each splash of the sea foam becoming kin to him. The sky began to change, grow light and cast long shadows over the shore. With the morning came memory, his mother's voice, her warm wings. Chiro knew it was time to go home. Flying higher than he'd ever flown, Chiro began to sing, listening, listening, 
the music of the land rose up in all of its many textures, each tree, each cliff, each place he'd passed, until finally the song of home added its voice to the others. His cave called out from the blanketing shrubs and pillows of moss at its mouth, and Chiro followed that familiar sound back into the sheltering earth. His mother caught him all up in her wings and asked, Was it very dark in the world, little wing? What did you see? Why, Mama, Chiro said laughing, it was very, very dark. And I saw everything. And then he yawned and turned his head into the warmth of her body, letting the rising sun's quiet song carry him, lull him, and sing him to sleep. Good night, Jiro. And at the end right here, it says, the name Chiro was inspired by the word Chiroptera from Greek Chir, hand, so Chir means hand, and Teron, which means wing, the order name for bats, the only mammals capable of true flight. So the scientific group name for bats is Chiroptera, which means hand wing. And if you look closely at a picture of a bat's wing, you can actually see that it has all the same hand bones that we have, it just has really long fingers and then a membrane between those fingers and that makes up its wing. So if you want to learn more about bats, um, I will put a link to the resources that I posted with our other story time and that's a way to get back to that story time as well. It will be in those resources. So you can learn more about bats, you can learn about the things, the wonderful things that bats do for us and you can also learn about some ways that you can help bats. So enjoy bat decor this Halloween, um, but also keep in mind about what a helpful animal they are. And if you are feeling a little bit scared about bats, maybe they are kind of spooky to you, the more we learn about something, the less scary it becomes. So I challenge you to learn a little bit more about bats and see if maybe that doesn't help you overcome your fears. Thank you for joining us in Storytime this week. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.